Stop farting, man. <laughs> Holy <laughs> That's fast. Hey guys, Christian here. Welcome back to another video. This is part two to the video where I install a turbo upgrade to the 335i. So this is gonna be part two if you guys missed part one, which is very important if you're looking to add power to your car. I suggest you guys watch that video first. I will have a link in the description to that video. Pretty much we were just doing all the maintenance on the engine that needed to be done. Seals, hoses, gaskets, and stuff like that. And in part two, which is this video, we're gonna actually show you guys exactly which turbo upgrade I got for the car and tell you a little bit of why I chose to go with that setup. Looks like we got everything we need to install the turbo upgrade. What do we have here? Bolts for the oil pan, gasket. Yep. And of course, since we're gonna be adding a significant amount of power to the engine, we wanna make sure we take care and upgrade the low pressure fuel pump uh, we decided to go with spool performance this is a wall boral 450 stage 2 fuel pump so this should be good enough to get the, the power that i'm aiming for yeah so basically um these wall bros these, these are designed to flow ethanol so you can run anywhere from you know as low as uh the e30 mix all the way up to a full e85 whereas your stock fuel pump um they're really good for like an E25 to E30 mix, anything above that. Um, they start to fail. Yeah, they start to fail. Yeah, so um, this is a really good pump. Um, yeah, you can do a whole lot with it. So yeah, you guys heard Matt. This is definitely very essential plus E85, boys. Yeah, the most I've ever seen on N54 stock fuel pumps is like a blend of E30, which even that is kind of pushing it to the max and then can have the, the pump uh, fail prematurely. What are you doing there? Oh, the oil pan gasket. Yes, yes, yes. Fresh, rubbery, it's not stale and crunchy like the last one. Is that for me? Maybe. <laughs> All right, so Ali went ahead and installed the oil pan back in there with the fresh gasket. We shouldn't be leaking anymore since this gasket is actually, looks like it's made out of rubber, unlike the other one that looked like it was made out of like hard plastic. <laughs> yep, bye bye to these turbos right here. I'm not gonna miss them at all. Actually, talking about the turbos, I think you guys actually want to see what turbo upgrade I went with. I mean, a lot of you guys have been messaging me on Instagram asking about which turbo setup I went with. And either I just heart the comment or reply with a shrugged shoulder emoji. So, uh, yeah, let's show you guys which turbos I ended up going with. And these are right there. This is what I ended up going with. Hey, there are guys. These are pure stage twos, but not the DDs, not the daily driving one. I think that's what the DD stands for. Yeah. These are the high flow ones, which cost like an additional 500 bucks. Um, I believe they're rated at 700 horsepower to the wheel max. Um, I don't think I'm looking to take it that far, but it's good to have that overhead there in case I did want to add more power in the future. Essentially what Pure does, they take the stock N54 uh, turbos, they give it the exhaust upgrade. They receive thrust upgrades and also the most essential upgrade is the billet wheel right here. And I cannot forget to mention this upgrade right here. Uh, typically if your M54 suffers the notorious wastegate rattle, this is a reason. Typically these are weak points, they get very loose over time and they make a noise. So Pure went ahead and upgraded and reinforced the wastegate rod so it doesn't rattle in the future. I'm pretty sure I disappointed a lot of you guys since most of you guys were guessing single turbo and no, I actually decided to go with the upgraded twins for a few reasons. One, price and obviously if you get a single turbo kit from let's say Doc Racing, it's about five grand for the kit and that's a lot of money. I think a set of pure stage two high flows are just under three thousand dollars which is about a two thousand dollar savings and i would still be able to get the power that i want which is 550 to 600 horsepower to the wheel also i kind of fell in love with uh the power band of the stock 335 engine like the low end torque the response you get the minimal turbo lag so i kind of wanted to keep the power band the reaction of the throttle almost the same and i know from hearing from people with experience that the single turbo will change like the driving dynamics of the car 
So I just didn't want to go that route, plus I get to save $2,000 at the same time. Plus I guess this setup here will be considered more of a sleeper since it's not a top mount where everybody can see when you open up the hood. This one you can just pop the hood open, nobody sees it, they don't know how much power you're running. But if they see a big single turbo at the top, they're going to know something's up. So one thing that I forgot to talk about, if you look at the, this is the stock uh, turbos that we just pulled out. Look at the size of the opening on this one, and then look at the size of the opening on the Pure Stage 2 high flows. It's much bigger, yeah. Finger. Okay, put the finger in the other one. Yeah, so see, that one goes up to like the middle of your finger. The other one was just like one fourth. Yeah. So it's much bigger. Um, what Ali was telling me is that they replaced this entire thing here. I thought they just machined this open, but then if you pull back the rubber here, that's not what they did. They just went ahead and completely changed it, stuffed more, I guess, upgrades in there, more things, and it allows for much higher airflow, I'm guessing. That's how you can, more opening, less restriction, more airflow, more power. Another big difference is these are the stock ones right here. Look at the size of that one, and then look at the pure ones. It looks like they shaved around, made this hole much bigger, of course, to increase the flow of it. You see how this is here? You can see that it's missing here, so they completely shaved it around to make it a bigger opening. This F80 M3 right here makes me really, really want to own one. It's like tastefully modified, and I think it's running like, I think producing like 750 horsepower to the wheel on a stock engine. That's freaking insane. This car is a freaking rocket ship. I know you guys, this could be happening very, very soon. And this 135i has a complete different setup, the one a lot of you guys wanted me to get, which is the big single top mount dock race turbocharger. That sits beautifully up there and looks awesome on pictures. The guys at PSI actually did this one as well. Oh, that's there one. you go, see that's the bad one. That one's misfiring. That's the one that was misfiring. But yeah guys, so if you have a bad valve cover or um, bad valve cover gasket, these get drenched in oil and you get misfires. That's what was happening to me. That's why I've been that around misfires. Misfire for, yeah, I told you. I told you the two cylinders that was misfiring. That's why I had to switch them back around to try to stretch it out until today. But essentially, the reason you guys have been seeing an engine light on my car all those days, I think it's because of the misfires on those spark plugs. Mm, I don't know about that. Come on, I man. think all the air leaks here, the map Everything. sensor. Okay. The well, I mean, every time I ran the codes, it said cylinder three and five misfires. Yeah, that's because of other things. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Well, obviously the valve car too. Well, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, I guess. There you go. What was that, sir? <laughs> <laughs> if you can do the Christmas uh, jingle with that, I'm gonna, it's, it's gonna be, I'm gonna be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so cute, so cute. I want to show you guys something that I didn't get to show you guys in the reveal video, which is crazy. I found out about it afterwards. Watch, it's pretty cool. Oh, actually, never mind. Okay, guys, so the next essential upgrade are going to be the inlets. Uh, as you can tell, um, much bigger than the stock ones. They're normally, I think, 1.75 inches. Is that what it is? Some, and these like are that. two inches, so these are much bigger. So uh, they're going to be less restrictive. And these are silicone. I got these from uh, VRSF, which is not a surprise as you guys have probably watched my previous episodes. Uh, the bolt on my car are from VRSF. I'm a big fan of VRSF because they sell uh, the performance modifications at a really good competitive price, and, but they don't sacrifice on quality. Like these are really good inlets along with the downpipes and the intakes and all that's good, good stuff. So I've had them on for about, I don't know, seven, eight months, the rest of the mods and no issues so far. Guys, you won't believe the freaking difference between the VRSF ones <laughs> and the stock ones. The VRSF ones are freaking massive, as you can see. And then you look at the stock ones, you're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> now you know why you get so much of a performance gain. Because if you were comparing side by side, <laughs> I don't know what the hell BMW was thinking. <laughs> As you can tell, I couldn't keep a, a straight face <laughs> because that was obviously a freaking joke. <laughs> I, I I was trying to tell Ali to keep a straight face for that one, but uh, we just couldn't. So we just decided to 
screw it. Here's a comparison between the VRSF aftermarket inlets and the factory ones. As you can see, the factory ones are made out of this plastic. I mean, what a surprise, BMW. Obviously, looking at it, you can tell that these are much more restrictive because look how skinny they get compared to how wide the VRSF ones are. So obviously on the VRSF inlets is going to be less restrictive which in turn you're going to get more air, uh, better turbo spool, more power. And not to mention these can fail at any time since they're made out of plastic and they're within the engine that gets really really hot. Pretty much like anything plastic under the engine eventually it's going to fail. Uh, these are going to definitely be much more rugged and last you much longer. The one thing that I always hear about these inlets, if you have the engine inside of the car, I heard they're a pain in the butt to install because it's just, I guess there's not a lot of room to work with and you're probably gonna shred your hands trying to maneuver these and kind of rot them the correct way. But obviously when you have the engine out, like we do here with my N54, it's pretty easy, plug and play. You don't really have to hassle too much to get them on unlike when they're inside of the engine bay and you got minimal room to work with. Yes sir, so what's left to do? Now put the motor back on the subframe. Yeah, Just put the harness back on the motor, put the intake manifold back on it and then slap it back in. And now uh, we're gonna install the new plugs. So I got these a little bit over two months ago but I was trying to stretch out the life of the current plugs. Uh, just waiting for us to install the turbos first so then I wouldn't mess these up. I got these from FCP Railroad. If you guys ever shopped there before, you get a lifetime warranty. So pretty much just bought a new set and then I should be able to return the old set and get my money back. But since it's been like two months since I've had these, I'm not sure how long the grace period is. But anyways, uh, these are uh, two-step colder plugs uh, from NGK. These are really good, especially if you're looking to make a lot of power. So as you can see, there's one of the old plugs right here, which are very, very toasty. And then here is a new plug. Huge difference. And literally this can be the reason why your car doesn't run optimally. So it's very important to uh, swap out your plugs regularly, especially when you got a tuned car. Uh, typically they recommend, what is it, like five to 10,000 miles on a tuned car to replace the plugs? I mean, it depends on Depends on the drive. driving. And obviously depending on the condition of the engine. All I know is that I go through more coils and spark plugs after I started tuning the car. So it's definitely uh, not the regular uh, interval that BMW recommends. Put her down. Put her down. So uh, at least gonna go ahead and gap them to uh, 22. Don't do this. <laughs> what are you playing darts there? No, I've seen people just go. They just toss them in there. Oh, didn't make it. Oh. Okay, maybe I should aim now. You got two more tries. Oh, oh you oh, missed sorry. that one. Okay, good. Kobe. Oh. oh. So weird enough, I decided to see which uh, injectors I have because I decided not to go with the Index 12s for now because I didn't want to spend whatever it is, $1,300. And I realized that there's a mixed batch here. There's actually three Index 4s and three Index 9s. So at one point these were swapped out and this must have been before I owned this 335i so more than five years ago because um, it was, definitely wasn't me. And I'm not having any failures with these so I'm not going to swap them out till now and then eventually if I do need to swap them out it's pretty easy to do from uh, within the engine bay. What are you guys working on? Uh, motor, mounts. motor mounts, drive shaft, diff suit, uh, bushings, oil leaks. You know, we'll be able yeah. things. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> we love them, we hate them. Both. <laughs> Both of them. Also, one question that I get all the time on my N54 engine is how much miles I have on it. At the moment, it has 78,000 miles, which is not much for a car that is from 2008. When I first bought it, like five years ago, thinking back in 2015, the motor only had 30. 3,000 miles on it so that means the previous owner the only owner before me uh, drove it for seven years and only put 30,000 miles on it so uh, yeah not a lot of miles at all what do you got there sir is that a dock race intake is manifold it? that's is not it Whoa! Ooh, that looks good oh yeah I'm telling you guys big boy moves over here only big boy moves yeah we're, yeah, we're definitely not putting that on in there. But he is selling this if you guys are interested in it. He's uh, selling it for a really good discount. How can they contact you through Instagram? 
whatever. Yeah. I don't, I don't care which way you contact me. I <laughs> need the money. <laughs> so he has that uh, Doc Race manifold for sale. If you're looking to do port injection or you just want better performance in general, um, I'll put his Instagram tag somewhere here. Just message him and he'll sell it to you at a discount of rate, cheaper than what you can get it from Doc Race. See, if you had that Doc Race manifold, you know, you could have made like real manpower. What's real manpower? What's the minimum to get into that club? I don't know, like six something. This is a daily driver though. Okay, who say you can't daily drive a 600 horsepower car? Watch me. <laughs> I think I think 550 is enough for me. You say that until you drive 600 horsepower car. You're actually right because I used to think that the 400 horsepower was very fast and now it, do it doesn't feel like it's very fast. Okay, all done. Engine refreshed. The mods are installed. Time to put the uh, engine back into the, the baby over there. I'll tell you something guys, even though I'm not doing any of the labor, and I'm just kind of watching, I'm at least learning how a lot of that stuff works. So if I were to explain it to you guys, or if you guys had a question on Instagram, I can better explain a lot of this stuff because I've seen firsthand exactly how that works. There, boys. I'm not getting my AC back today, am I? Probably not. But I'll recharge it tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. But you'll have everything else. Okay. AKA the power. I don't know if you guys remember uh, back on like episode, I think it was episode three with the BMW 335i. It was a 135 that showed up that I think was producing, what, like 430 horsepower, Steven? 420. 420. And it had a really loud exhaust. I think you guys, you guys remember this guy probably, yeah, Steven. Probably. But anyways, he did a really big upgrade to his car recently. Um, he did go with a turbo upgrade, but unlike me that I went for the pure stage twos, he went for the big boy single. He's gonna show us a little bit uh, of the setup. Let's break it out. Oh yeah, see, this is the beautiful thing. See, I wanted to do it at one point. It looks so beautiful when you open up, uh, when you open up the hood. He just recently got the tune completely Done. Good, right? Yeah. And you yeah. pulled it for the first time, what, yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. I did a flyby, what they call it. So. And I put a big smile on your face. Oh, right? hell yeah. Hell yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Apparently, this rip, yeah. he hasn't dyno it yet, so he doesn't know how much power it makes. Yeah. But uh, we should get those numbers uh, pretty soon. Yeah, my goal is like later on in the future, like 700 horsepower. 700 horsepower? Yeah. That's freaking crazy. Yep. So I'll keep you guys updated. He might be going somewhere pretty soon. But I'll give you guys updated. He says he's gonna let me drive the car, so we're definitely gonna get it on the channel. This freaking E46 M3 looks stupid clean. You know what's crazy is that uh, now that I purchased the E46 M3, I'm starting to see them all over the damn place. You know, every time you buy a car or somebody in your family owns a specific car for the first time, those cars just start popping out everywhere. Look at this. Got some Brom seats that you can see right through. Clean and set up. Fitment is on point. Carbon fiber trunk. Yeah, this is a really nice vert. Nice and clean. Yeah, sure. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so while he's over here finishing up, we're gonna move over to see what Zach's doing with the car now. So, uh, yeah, since we removed the cats off the exhaust, uh, Zach's over there fabricating some pipes so he can weld on. And essentially this is going to be a straight pipe system of course if the valve is open if the valve is closed then it's going to funnel it this way to the stock muffler and it should be able to silence that and make it sound like it's stock unmodified so yeah zach's really good with fabricating stuff and working on exhaust and welding and stuff like that if you guys watched the other episode where uh, we were adding the tips to the to the car that was actually Zach that was doing that and he's also working on a roll cage for uh, Ali's E36. Um, he does this on the side so like if you guys want to do anything custom on your car like that you can reach out to him on his Instagram and I'll make sure that I'll put that on screen and contact him and uh, inquire about pricing and stuff like that but he's really good at doing it and he can pretty much customize anything that you want to do. Ah, blue cooling. 
Haven't seen that color in a while. Supposed to well, we don't have AC, which is fine. Um, we have a straight pipe since uh, Zach's going to take care of it tomorrow. So we're essentially just running catless down pipes and then nothing else. So this is going to sound very, very loud. So yeah, the new uh, turbo setup with uh, pretty much no exhaust is going to sound really freaking sick. Especially if I enable the burble tune. It's going to sound like gunshots. Neighbors are really going to hate me tonight. So I think we're pretty much done. I think Ali's just uh, connecting the battery. Yeah, he's reconnecting the battery. He's going to start the car. And uh, hopefully it sounds alright. No rattling noises. No maracas playing. Yeah, let's see. come tomorrow morning to install it so I have to start this car in the morning and that cold start is freaking ridiculously loud um, yeah neighbors are definitely gonna hate me and hopefully I can make the 36 minute drive without being stopped by a cop Pretty much everything's done already with the 335i. Well, most of it. Tomorrow I'm going to come back to PSI just to do a few things. Uh, to get an alignment, um, install the stage 2 fuel pump, and install the exhaust and get that welded as well. Yeah, the downpipes. There's nothing connected to them. Yeah. Drives normal though? Fluid? Yeah, it drives normal, but there's no torque because there's no exhaust. <laughs> so there's no back pressure. <laughs> Guys, this is way too loud. I cannot believe I'm about to drive all the way home with this loudness. Like I can literally feel an earthquake under my ass. This is gonna be very bad. I could only imagine how it's going to feel once I get on the highway and I'm going at 60, 70 miles per hour, I'm going to freaking die. Okay, so we're back here at PSI. I drove back home 40 minutes with that loud, non-exhaust 335i. It was a complete nightmare. Lost some hearing, got home with a headache. This morning I actually um, decided to do things a little bit differently and I wore some noise canceling headsets and it was the most beautiful thing on the way here. Uh, we're gonna get that resolved right now. Zach and Steven are actually working on getting the exhaust on here. Uh, customizing it and then welding it all back together. So uh, yeah, this side on the passenger side should be pretty simple since it's a straight shot. I think Zach already has the exact measurement for that one cut out. Uh, this one's a little tricky because obviously it takes a bend to then go straight. So um, that's what they're trying to do right now. Mock it up to get the right measurements, weld it on the floor and then uh, install it back up there. it on we essentially have the down pipes and straight all the way down to the valve tronic exhaust system which if I have the valve open is gonna be super loud okay so the exhaust is fully installed and Ali is about to turn it on so we can hear what it sounds like now that it doesn't have the secondary cats apparently 
it's much easier to install the low pressure fuel pump on the E93 because you can just drop the top and get access to it. <laughs> Alright, so the fuel pump is complete, yeah, and yeah, Ali's yeah. taking me for a small ride. Yeah, this yeah. will officially be the first test ride with everything done. Huh? Oh, that's loud, but sexy. <laughs> that farted, man. <laughs> And that's without the tune. Not even 100 percent throttle. That's like 50 percent. Say like yeah, 50 to the 70 somewhere around that. I drove the 335i later that day and man was I blown away. Even though I was still using the same off the shelf map as before, the upgraded turbos, the bigger inlets and the overall refresh engine made a huge difference performance wise. Next up is a custom tune which will really bring the setup to its potential. Of course I'll make a video on that so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. And as always thanks for watching, till next time.